Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am starting a project now in my basement that I wasn't expecting to start now, but another big project kind of fell through. I don't think it's even happening this year. So this is a project my daughter's been wanting and I guess it's time for us to go ahead and do it. But before we really get into that aspect of the project, I kind of wanted to show you just one detailed thing that I am doing or have done previously in other areas of the basement with regards to my superior walls. So in another video, I showed you how I did the framing for the corner within uh, superior wall systems because the corners kind of have nothing here if you want to actually finish the space. But another area that I specifically focused on was because of how much I wanted to focus on air tightness in my whole house envelope. Now, some people might think this particular detail is uh, me being a little anal and uh, I don't care. I was going for like super airtight, like passive house levels of air tightness. If you don't know what that is, go look it up. I don't feel like describing the whole thing. So I don't actually know if I achieved that, but I'm trying to, I tried to, and I'm trying to continually with details like this. And for anybody out there who still kind of thinks that houses need to breathe, no, they don't need to breathe. They need to be able to dry and with many new products and modern building techniques, houses are being built in such a way that they can properly dry while also being very airtight, which makes them more efficient. Anyways, moving on from all that. What I found when I started finishing areas of my basement was that these corners, because these corners of superior walls are bolted together. They're bolted and caulked inside and out. And at the very bottom here, this bolted connection was not bad. It wasn't loose or anything, but there was still enough of gaps within this connection and I think even around the bolts at times where I could literally feel small amounts of air coming through here. Now that might sound weird, well this one is a fully open wall as we have a walkout space here, but other areas are completely underground yet I could still feel air moving through there which is kind of weird and I think most people wouldn't expect that, but air can still actually get through the ground and apparently come up even through a space like this. So I wanted to seal that up and make sure it was good and airtight as well as watertight because I don't want water leaking up through some of this stuff because just groundwater coming up. And some of these actually were damp and had small puddles just in here. It wasn't enough to do any sort of flooding or anything like that. It wasn't crazy, but it just showed me that this was a spot that I really wanted to make sure was good and sealed. So that's what I want to show you today what I did in most of my spots to try and accomplish that. Now, if you notice, uh, apparently some time ago, I honestly don't even remember doing it. I must have done it when I was doing probably some other corners in another spot of the basement. But I actually already came through here and caulked this, this whole joint right along the front edge here, as well as the joint between the two pieces with a uh, masonry type caulk. Let me, sh let me show you what I got. So what I use for this kind of stuff is uh, Zinser's Watertight. This is a polyurethane caulk, essentially that is made specifically for concrete and masonry. Now this brand is a pretty, Zinsser is a pretty big well-known brand. I just get this stuff from, you know, the local big box store. And you should be able to find that stuff probably just about anywhere. But really any polyurethane uh, caulk sealant meant for concrete and masonry should be perfectly fine. So first thing I need to do, obviously, and, and this is something I would do even before uh, actually caulking this, which I assume I did, but as you know, as time goes on, as things happen, stuff, especially in basements, just gets dirty. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this stuff out. I'm gonna vacuum all this loose debris out in here, make sure this is completely clean. And I'm probably even gonna come back and like just wipe this off, maybe scrub it a little bit with water to try and make sure any dirt, dust, debris, whatever is gone because of what I'm gonna finish this off with. So let's go ahead and give it a good uh, vacuuming. Okay, this looks pretty good in terms of the loose debris. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get some water, paper towels, maybe even like a stiff bristle brush and try to clean up. Cause I can tell there's like a layer of dirt and stuff on here. And I'm gonna try and get that off as best I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that and try and get this cleaned up even nicer. Thank you. 
Okay, I think that's about as clean as I'm probably reasonably gonna get it in these uh, little bolt hole spots. And now I could just let this sit and wait for it to dry, but uh, I'm impatient, that'll take way too long. So I'm gonna get a heat gun and get this dried up really quick. Obviously be careful when dealing with heat guns. The ends of these can be very hot, so you always have to be mindful of where you put the tip. And obviously in this case, you gotta be mindful of the foam. If you set the tip down on the foam or you leave it on there for too long, you could end up actually melting some of this. So be mindful of that. Okay, so I just give it one last vacuuming just to get rid of any uh, new debris that we may have created there. And uh, I think this is ready for my, my uh, well, secret sauce, I guess. So what I have found has worked best for me is Flex Seal. Good for uh, sealing up air and water leaks as well as making boats out of screen doors. I prefer the can because you can get this in like caulk, you can get it in a spray. Uh, you can get it in a few different forms, but I prefer the can because then I can just pour it in here. And I think that just works easiest, works best to cover and fill up the whole space. You could do the caulk, but it might be hard to actually get like the caulk gun in there to do things right. Then you might just have to like use your finger, tool it to get it the best. So this is just what I have found to be the easiest way to do it. It's not the cheapest way because the stuff is not cheap. So this kind of has to just depend on what you want. You know, what you think is going to be best for what you want, for your desires or goals with your uh, superior wall space. If anybody out there knows of a better solution, cheaper solution, but does essentially the exact same thing, let me know. Please, I'm, I think I still have a few more of these in my basement that I might need to do this for. So uh, yeah, let me know and I will adjust uh, as needed. Oh, and I forgot. I would be careful with the Flex Seal spray cans. I've used a couple of those. The black color I think is okay. It didn't seem to react weirdly with anything, but the clear kind, for whatever reason, how, whatever the differences are in their uh, chemistry, the, the clear kind will literally eat this foam. The black I've sprayed on it and the foam seems perfectly fine, so I don't know why they would be that different, but uh, I would avoid the clear kind completely, the spray particularly. So. Uh, yeah, just that disclaimer there, because I have used that and it literally eats the foam. So, yeah, there's that. Okay, so this is pretty stupid. I opened this can and it's literally a solid rubber mass. It is completely cured in the can. So that's kind of a pain. Okay, well that was annoying, but we're good now, so let's move on. Okay, so this is my uh, my big fancy secret. I pour flex seal on it. <laughs> Oop, that was actually a lot. Oops. So the left side got filled pretty full because the can just kind of poured out faster than I was expecting it to. It doesn't need to be that high, more like along the right hand side. If even that, it just kind of depends. I just think that's easier, so I'm willing to just kind of pour it in there as opposed to trying to like paint this stuff on and uh, be a little more conservative with it. One can doing it like this can still get me another one of those corners, probably even a third one, just depending on how, uh, how well I <laughs> properly pour it into there. So that's about it. Maybe you thought this was stupid, anal, over the top, whatever. But with the air tightness I've wanted to achieve with the house, and with how some of these corners work, so this one wasn't actually that bad. Some were worse that really needed it more than even this one did. But this is just what I found to be the best way or easiest way to really air and water seal that joint right there. So hopefully that helps you out. If you want to check out the other uh, superior wall corner video, I can pin that or you know somewhere around here in the video. I, I don't know. Maybe I already did. Maybe I'll pin it again. Why not? Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully it helps you with your own superior walls. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you next time. God bless. Okay, well, that was annoying, but we're good now.
But hopefully you guys like that. Hopefully it gives you... Dang it. 